Chris the Bergeron Zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. That's quite something. Is, 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 Laura, is Laura Stewart? I, I, saw, I saw Laura. So when we were thinking about doing this program, Laura kept saying, now remember, you have to have Sergeant Marshall here. And I was like, who is Sergeant Marshall? No, 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 you have to have Sergeant Marshall here. This is like really, really important. That is the most amazing thing. I mean, what you're doing here is just amazing in terms of trying to have a place that is, has a true sense of community. And I'm sure that from your perspective, those, those issues of you know, privacy versus intervention, those are always tough issues and trying to figure out that match. And nobody wants people walking into their home you know, just kind of at random. You know, that's kind of a, it's always a scary thing. But to try to f consciously figure that out as a neighborhood mat matter is terrific. And the familiarity helps out a lot. By me standing up here, you right. know, you're becoming familiar with my face. I've done a few other presentations. And you're not so mm -hmm. hesitant on opening the door because you know that, OK, He's an officer, he's the elder officer, and maybe you don't like my face. I think it's a good looking <laughs> face. But there are other officers who at least have the basic knowledge of the programs that we offer here. And so we're just trying to reiterate that the police department and the fire department and any other first responder, we're here for you. And we want to make sure that you get the services that we are offering for you, um, just to make you more comfortable in your house. And we're going to hold questions for, for um, Sergeant Marshall and others until we're done. Uh, but thank you very, very much. Have a seat. Um, so now we're going to talk about, in general, what kinds of care you can get at home um, to try to help you stay at home. Well, to, and I'm just kind of, I, I want to kind of go through all of those. For, first, I just want you to understand, to remember these three terms. Well, you know one, VNA, that's, well, that, that's easy, that's her, right? So visiting nurses, which does a lot here, and Ella's going to be commenting on some of these programs as we go through. Uh, the others are ASAP, the Aging Services Access Point. Um, there, is, there is an ASAP that covers every area in Massachusetts. They are all run by nonprofits. How many people here have heard of Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Island? Raise your hand. A lot, right? A lot. More than half of you. That's the ASAP that covers Cape Cod and the Islands. And they are the vehicle through which really all state and federal money, pretty much, for elders come. Um, so they're, they're like really important. The Executive Office of Elder Affairs is at the state level, the folks that, that provide some of the funding that we're going to talk about. And then there are GCMs. I want you to note that term because this is relatively new. GCMs are geriatric care managers. What is happening, and I, I see this kind of, uh, where, uh, we, I do a lot of this kind of work and I see this evolving. There are folks who are typically former social workers uh, or former nurses who have now decided that they want, what they want to do is specialize in working with older folks and figuring out how to decode all of the programs that we're talking about and how to figure out what combination of medical and social issues an elder might have who might be dealing with the issues that if left kind of untended, Sergeant Marshall ends up seeing because they're folks that are really in trouble because they haven't figured it out. So I'm just mentioning that as we go through because you may see GCMs, geriatric care man managers, popping up more and more. And by the way, thank you very much to Alice Daniels for coming today because Alice is one of the, one of the, has one of the, the, the larger home care providing agencies here in, in uh, Nantucket. And if, so if I'm saying anything incorrect, please tell me, right? Because you're doing this all the time. So if you are you know, like folks here, and you're kind of, uh, you know, you're getting older like me, you know, and, but you're feeling, still feeling good and stuff, but you're wondering, you're always wondering, so is there anything I can get at home to help me? Because suppose I just need help, you know, making the bed, you know, or, or getting dressed, or making some meals. I need some limited help sometimes, or I've been sick and I need some help. Is there anything? Well, actually there is. Um, the Executive Office of Elder Affairs funds programs. There are two of them. One is called BASIC. I'll just call it BASIC. The other one is called ECOP, or Enhanced Community Options. Um, through the first program, you are eligible to have them help you pay for up to three hours a week of home care. Uh, and through ECOP, as, mu as much as six hours a week of home care. In both programs, there is a, there is a copay, depending on what your income is, but even if your income is as high as, and you know, once again, your income may be way over this, so it may not be appropriate to you, but even if your income is as high as $37,000 per year for a family of two, 
And for folks who are on Social Security, that's, that's, most people are below that, right? Um, you, will, you'll pay a, you, will, you will have to pay a copay, but it won't be like a huge copay. And once again, think about six hours per week of home care. And, and what, what's, the, what's the value of home care? What's the cost of home care on the island? Is it right, $20, $25 an hour, around there? 30? Okay, so six times 30 is 180 times four weeks, right? So it'd be about $700 a month. And you're looking at co-pays that run somewhere between zero and $140 per month. So you could be talking about really substantial. I'd like you to hold questions if you could just until the end to make sure we go through it. So that may be a program that works for you, right? Um, if, you are, if you are homebound, if you are stuck um, and, you, and you're not driving anymore, uh, and you are a veteran. We talked a little bit about veteran services um, last month, but I'm going to run through these very quickly because for so many folks in, in this age group, people are veterans who did serve at least one day during a period of war, whether that was World War II or whether that was Korea. Um, if you are homebound and you served 90 days in the military, or you're the spouse of a person who did, or the widow of a person who did, and at least one of those days was during a period of wartime. You didn't have to serve overseas, but one of those 90 days had to be in a period of wartime. And by the way, for folks who are you know, World War II veterans, World War II, for the purposes of this program, ended at the end of 1946. Uh, you know, not when the atomic bomb dropped, but a year and a half later, right? Um, um, the Korean War, and, and I just was talking to a friend who just found out that he's a veteran, right, for this program, ended in 1955. Uh, not in 1953 when Eisenhower was elected and they started doing the negotiations. So a lot of folks are eligible for this that aren't aware of it. If you are, if you fit into one of those categories and you are homebound, right, um, that, and you are receiving services at home from one of these home care folks, right, in order to assist you with one of your activities of daily living, and your activities of daily living are uh, dressing, I always get one of these missing, dressing, bathing, eating, showering, taking your medicine, and uh, transporting. That is getting out of a chair, getting across the room, sitting down again. If you need help with those from a person who is coming into your home, the VA will, 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 provi will provide you with some of this benefit. Now, the way it works is the veteran's benefit, if you are a veteran, is up to $2,054 per month. That's a huge amount. They will supplement your income up to that amount. Now. The question then is, because, but you're thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, that's not a whole lot of income. You know? That's what I make is $2,000 a month now, so I'm not going to get any kind of benefit. But the issue is, when you figure out your income, for their purposes, income, you subtract from it everything that you're paying to that home care worker. So if you have income of $2,000 a month, but you're, getting, but you're paying $1,000 a month in home care, that 1000 gets subtracted from your income which means for VA purposes, your income is only $1,000 a month. You're entitled to 2054 so you end up getting a very, very large benefit. So a lot of people qualify for this. Um, there is a myth that there is an asset test, which means that if you've got, less th if you've got more than $80,000, you don't qualify for the benefit. That is incorrect. That's incorrect. Um, first of all, uh, your house does not count when you're, ca when you're figuring out, well, there is, a, there is an asset the VA will examine your assets, but the issue is they'll examine them to figure out whether based on your age and therefore your life expectancy, you're going to run out of money before you die. So if you're a younger person, right, uh, or, it, it, or depending on what your other income is, you may be allowed to keep really very substantial assets. We've seen people qualify for this program that have several hundred thousand dollars in assets in addition to their home, and I know that's the big issue here in Nantucket because most programs, you count the house and it throws everything off, you know. In this program, you can qualify for all of that. So I think it's really important to realize that. Medicare, if you are home, once again, if you are homebound, um, did you know, how many people here know that you can get Medicare benefits, not Medicaid, but Medicare benefits um, at home even though you haven't gone to a hospital? How many people know that? Raise your hand. See, most people assume because that's the most common way that people get benefits, that you get benefits because you go to the hospital, you get discharged, and then someone sends somebody from the VNA over to your house, uh, and there's a discharge order and a discharge plan, and the question is, how do we get you better? 
and Medicare will pay for that for some period of time. But then there are these 60-day plans. Do you want to talk a little bit about 60-day sure. plans, Ella? Sure. So what Arthur was talking about is, you know, that typically people feel that VNA is brought into the picture after a hospitalization. Um, VNA, VNA can also be brought in um, through a referral through your doctor, or um, you may call because your mom isn't feeling well. You do, she's homebound, and you feel she could use some nursing assessment and some assistance. Call to the doctor. Doctor makes the referral, and then we get the patient and we develop a plan of care um, for the patient. Those plans of care are for 60 days. Um, Medicare, the government, says we'll give you 60 days to effect some improvement for your patient to make a difference. Um, we make a plan with the patient um, of realistic goals for the patient, whether it's to return to base, baseline, how they were before they had the medical episode, or to their new level of, of baseline, with the, with the intention and the hope that the patient will be able to continue to live at home um, with supportive services. And the VNA offers um, skilled nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. All that stuff. A social worker and home health aides. And, um, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and home health aides. Yes. So if you, aides. If, you are, if your program mm -hmm. of care requires you to need one of these, mm -hmm. then you are also, you, they can also prescribe um, home health aides, mm -hmm. right, yep. that are ancillary to the provision of these services, Correct. right? And they support, the home health aides do more than just help you take a shower. The home health aides work with the nurses to support the correct taking of your medications. They work with the physical therapist to support a home exercise program. So that generally when we schedule patients, the physical therapist might see the patient two to three times a week. The home health aide might also see the patient two to three times a week at differing times and they would work to support, based on what the physical therapist has prescribed, um, a plan of care for the patient. So really, there's good continuity of care for the 60 days that Medicare allows us to, um, to care for the patient. There's a lot that can be done. It's a, it's a lot of work. You know, they may see somebody different. They may see some member of this team every day. And, and at the end days. of the 60 days, so what happens? So at the Is end that, of the, the 60 end of the days, benefit? But they, um, yes and no. At the end of 60 days, Medicare says, you know, here, you said you would do this for the patient. We paid you some money for that. We'll pay you the rest if you've accomplished your goals. And if the patient, by virtue of their disease or illness or whatever it is that brought them to us in the first place, if they haven't made all the progress that we had hoped or that they had hoped in that time frame, Medicare will allow us to recertify, give us another 60 days. Um, to do not the same thing. We have to, you know, we have to s sort of look to move forward, to progress the plan. But not everybody moves at the same pace. You know, a gentleman who comes home at 66 with a new knee may be fit and buff and enthusiastic about his aftercare and may make a lot faster pre progress with a knee replacement than somebody who's 85 with congestive heart failure or maybe diabetes or, you know, wh for whom a hospitalization was a little more debilitating. So Medicare doesn't say, you know, a knee replacement, you get 60 days and that's it for everyone. For somebody who's 85, it may take quite a bit longer. And so they allow us that time, recognizing those differences. How about the homebound condition? Yes. Is that absolute? Homebound is a condition of Medicare um, in order to have home health care. And the reasoning behind that is that if you are homebound, it is considerable and taxing effort is the language they use for you to access the same services in your community outside of your home. Um, if you are not homebound, then the premise uh, that Medicare operates on is that you can get yourself to the hospital to the outpatient therapy department, mm -hmm. or you can, uh, you know, that you can get around, basically. Right, so it so needs, so the, the mm -hmm. standard is that there needs to be real effort, it, right? Now, that's, and that's, that's a more difficult standard to hit than the VA standard. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that you're never leaving the house. No, no, right? it does not. It also, some people go hear homebound and they think bedbound. Not at all. Right. Some people hear homebound and think that they can never go outside of the door. That's not true either. But, um, you, don't, but you don't want to be in the Dunkin' Donuts line with the no. VNA lady behind no. you saying. not so much. But what, what are you doing? But right. where you can be next to me is at church on Sunday, because right. you know I'm there, right? And um, you can be at your, uh, your grandchild's communion or wedding, or you can be at a lecture that Arthur comes to give or a, or a presentation. It just means that you're, you know, if you're able to get to all those things very easily, then you wouldn't be homebound. You know, if it's considerable and taxing effort.